know those perfect canoe trips? The ones where you only have perfect weather, tailwinds, beautiful campsites, and no bugs? Yep. Well, this wasn't one of them. This was a natural canoe trip. The kind where you get windbound, eaten alive, and where extensive blowdowns possible really means let the adventure begin. Instructions, they say. Looking at the map of Tomogamy, I noticed a river that intrigued me. Full of twists and turns, I couldn't help but wonder what waited to be discovered around each bend. I showed my wife the route I was considering to see what she thought. Extensive blowdowns possible? To my delight, she said, yes, that looks like a great idea. And with that, it was decided, Obabaka River, here we come. Typical canoe tripping fashion, we set off on our journey facing a stiff headwind. Thankfully, we didn't have too far to travel before we were able to find a rocky point to camp on. It would end up being a fairly short and early night for us as we ate our dinner and discussed the following day's plans and the journey ahead.
Day two was shaping up to be a good one. With just a couple of portages and a few hours of paddling, we would camp on and explore Diamond Lake. There are supposedly pictographs on Diamond Lake we were hoping to see if the wind and weather cooperated. But this is a canoe trip, so you know how this is going to go. It would not take long before we were on the start to a short but rocky portage into Diamond Lake. On the way down the hill, I inadvertently slipped and rolled my ankle. I was so annoyed with myself. So we just finished the portage into uh, Diamond Lake and I accidentally slipped on one of the rocks that uh, takes you into this lake. And I tweaked my ankle. I'm not sure how bad it is, but it's pretty tender right now. So we'll have to see. I'm almost debating the rest of the trip, <coughs> which is really crappy. But anyways, we'll see how it feels tonight and tomorrow. Because right now it's pretty, pretty tender. Part of the reason I was so frustrated is that we had just returned from another trip we were unable to complete for different reasons. Two incomplete trips in a row seemed unbearable. I was hoping and praying that with a little luck, some rest, an Advil, and a hearty meal, my ankle would feel strong enough to continue, but only time would tell. Waking the following morning, I was relieved that although heavily bruised, my ankle was feeling strong enough to continue. The goal was to start the Obabaka River, but with a strong headwind forecast, getting there was another story.
think we should wait on the beach for it to get calmer. I don't think it will, though. Well, we can't, we can't paddle on in that, baby. Why? It's silly. What do you mean, why? Look at it. It's not silly. That bad. There's nothing to get, there's nowhere to get out right there. I know you want to keep going, but, like, Ashley's common sense won out as it normally does. We would retreat to a sandy beach where we would set up our makeshift home and wait for the wind and waves to retreat. We would now be behind schedule in entering a river with so many obstructions we could end up being even further behind. The unknowns and uncertainty were starting to add up, but that's where the real fun begins. Is it going to be a long day tomorrow? Um. I feel like that's a leading question. <laughs> the only answer I can give is yes. I think you're probably right. But the river tomorrow, right? I guess so, if, if we make it. We're gonna make it. The morning would see us travel across Wakimika Lake to one of the most beautiful sections of our journey, the Wakimika River, which flows into the north end of Obabaka Lake. With limited obstructions other than a few beaver dams, we were able to soak up the sights and sounds of our leisurely morning. Just stay here, okay? Okay. Wait there, baby. Everybody watch their eyes. Yeah. Looks like you're in a jungle gym there for a sec. I <laughs> huh? thought you start gonna do pull-ups and <laughs> gymnastics, all sorts of oh, stuff. Oh yeah. Gymnast. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> you can tell by my cat like reflexes. <laughs> obstructions and some current we would normally be able to complete this in two hours but this river seemingly had other plans
It would not take long before we encountered our first blowdown. With no portage or obvious takeout, Ash and I would offload the dogs, or at the very least, Hugo, our nearly 150 pound, 11 year old Newfoundland dog. While Ashley would bushwhack to the other side of the obstruction and find a suitable spot on shore, I would attempt to drag the canoe over the downed trees. This was a process that repeated itself in one way or another countless times over the next couple of days. I think we can go right over that log, baby. the first 16 kilometers of the river and we're glad to make it to camp. That is, until we got there, almost completely overgrown with ferns and smack dab in the middle of an old logging road, we were quick to find fresh bear and wolf scat, along with parts of fridges, chairs and other debris like old winch lines from the last time this area must have been logged. To top it off, the site was crawling with every type of biting fly. And as I was setting up the shelter, the last stake I used to pin down the bug netting, I inadvertently drove directly into a wasp nest and was quickly stung. Things were really looking up. It would be a quick night of cooking in bed. But while outside making dinner, we discovered that by completing a loop around different types of scat and debris, you could lift your head net and drink your water without swallowing flies at the same time. Let's just hope we have this much fun tomorrow, we kept thinking. remaining section of the Obabaka River ahead, as well as some upstream creek travel to make our way back, it was an early start for us. Knowing we were a bit slower with the dogs and with bad weather in the forecast, we didn't want to waste any time. Walk down there 
and grab the rope, grab the uh, line for me. Yep. Okay. Draw. Draw, 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 draw. Nice. Nice work, baby. Nice work. I'll just meet you on the other side there. Something there. They're doing it again. Bear or moose or something up there. eventually stop and we were actually making great progress but then we saw this yeah like that's a lot of a lot of wood I don't know after a quick scout it was pretty apparent that we'd have to make our way up a steep and slippery looking goat path and bushwhack our way around this blowdown. straight down to the pipe now. Pick a line where there's not too many trees. This way, you think? Okay. I'll grab Betty back up. Good? 
Nice work. Nice work. Oh yeah. Possible obstructions, they say. Chance of rain. <laughs> oh. Oh man. Yep. It's fun out here. Nice work, baby. Flag of destiny. With the largest single obstacle out of the way, it was all downstream from here. Or should I say upstream, as we had to traverse our way up a meandering creek in order to start making our way back home. I'm super proud of you. That was not easy there, baby. Wow, you did really well. That's that is not easy. So good. Yeah. Oh, I literally don't want to do it, and I'm here. So. <laughs> Answer, my fluffy answer. Okay, how about this? Would you would you do it again? No. <laughs> Definitely not. That's all I needed to hear. That's all I needed to hear. <laughs> we had made it. It is always such an amazing feeling achieving these small goals you set out for yourself. We did not waste much time finding and setting up camp and decided to treat ourselves to a guilty pleasure of KD for dinner. After all the hard work, we were rewarded with a perfect evening and a beautiful sunset. So 
although still a little tired from the past couple of days, we were happy to awake to a beautiful day with a strong west wind which would push us along as we paddled back to Lake Tomogamy. We were excited to set off again and try to find some pictographs on Ababaka Lake. After a short paddle and a quick portage, we were back on Ababaka Lake. Ashley not only really enjoys looking for and at pictographs, but is also very good at finding them. We would end up finding three sets of pictographs, and although most were heavily faded, they were no less impressive. Cool though, it's definitely pictographs. Yeah, I think so. You can't make out what it is though, eh? No. It, no. You know what? These ones are so close to the water. Yeah, very. Yeah. Yeah, there's like there's something here, here, and then maybe there. Oh wow, that's cool. Like if I think that's it, yeah, the color looks right. It's definitely, but... it's that reddish. Yeah. I can't make out anything that's not there. Too. Oh yeah. It's cool. I'll have to do some research when we get home. We will. But it's like it's interesting because it's like what that woman told us. Like it's nearly always. Like, yeah, covered rock face. Yeah, like so there's usually some kind of overhang. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So cool. Very very cool. Yeah. Going across here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Super cool. And then what is that? With the wind at our backs and the sun on our faces, this was a perfect evening to complete our visit. This was a tough trip, but it was a true privilege to travel through such a beautiful landscape steeped in history. We're grateful that some of this land is still protected, but it is often under threat by industry. And if we don't get to see these places and how truly special they are, they will surely be forgotten. Out of sight, out of mind. Our hope is that by visiting these places and sharing them with you, together we can all be reminded of these important and fragile landscapes that make Canada so special.